Now uh, we'll have a patriotic selection by the Bellevue Community Band led by Dennis Bloomfield. The next guest speaker is William Bill Jane. He's a cemetery development coordinator out of Washington, D.C. This man is probably one of the most responsible people in getting national cemeteries built across the nation. Mr. Jane technically is responsible for the coordination of the development of new national cemeteries and the expansion of existing national cemeteries. Now you know why he's here. He began his government career in 1981 and has held numerous positions with the government since that date. He joined the Veterans Administration in 1984. Mr. James also served as a, memory, a member of the Board of Advisories of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, which is known as the Wall Fund, from 1979 to 1984. He's also, he was also a member of the Department Advisory Committee on the Readjustment of Vietnam veterans prior to joining the VA. Mr. Jane was a rifleman with the 26th Marine Regiment in Vietnam, was discharged in 1968. Some of his decorations include the Purple Heart, Combat Action Ribbon, 
and he's also a graduate of the University of California at Berkeley, but we won't hold that against him. Anyway, it's my pleasure to introduce Bill Jane. Bill? Well, thanks very much, Jim, and uh, I appreciate that uh, you won't hold my uh, alma mater, my, my fact that I graduated from uh, from Berkeley against me, but uh, it was uh, truly, you know, I think uh, it was the best education that you could get with the GI Bill, and I, I'm proud of the fact that I graduated from uh, Berkeley on the GI Bill. There weren't too many of us at that time, but I'm proud of it. Uh, distinguished guests, fellow veterans, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thanks very much for that kind welcome. I want to thank all of you who have contributed to this important event. Um, the, the volunteer support here at this cemetery is truly uh, amazing and gratifying. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very honored to be here and uh, as Jim said, uh, I do uh, coordinate a lot of the development of the cemeteries. I had uh, very little bit to do with this one uh, way back when and I'm uh, very proud of uh, the, the efforts of all those who did work on getting the, uh, the cemetery established here and, and on the part of the VA getting it built. It's, uh, it, it is a, a true jewel in the uh, uh, crown of VA's national cemeteries. I'd also like to express my appreciation to Jim as for all his great work as director of this uh, National Shrine and to all the members of his dedicated VA staff for their commitment to service. For me, uh, Memorial Day always brings back powerful memories of the village that I grew up in, in upstate New York. In those days, quite a long time ago now, half a century ago, the entire town turned out for the parade. Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Little League, the high school band, and it seemed that every man my father's age was marching in a splendid uniform that they wore just once a year. Those who were not marching stood along the parade route to cheer and salute. It was an exercise in nation building, a celebration of unity, and an outpouring of remembrance for those who had made our free, unified nation possible. What we do here today is continue this essential tradition our unity is fragile, and it's all too easy to forget those who sacrificed for our freedom. And neither this unity nor our freedom is guaranteed forever. We must work to continuously reinvent our experiment in self-government. Because of the work of this reinvention, it is appropriate that we look back on the lessons we have learned. Hard lessons learned in generations past, and within the past few years. From 1917 through 1975, the United States fought four major wars. We were at war for 23 of those 58 years, and some 35 million Americans wore the uniforms of our military. And 686,000 individuals gave their lives for our country. Most of those buried here in these hallowed grounds are veterans of those wars. Today we are once again at war, and in an effort to make some sense of the place we find ourselves in, I'd like to share quickly two stories about uh, two Americans that I've known. One is my dad, a World War II veteran who died before the dawning of our new millennium. He was born in 1920 less than two years after the armistice, the ceasefire that ended what we now call World War I. The unfinished business of that, quote, war to end all wars, of course, led to World War II. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, my father enlisted in the Navy, and by the summer of 1942, he was a seaman on a destroyer in the waters off the Solomon Islands. Three years later, he was on another destroyer in Tokyo Bay, a few days after the Japanese surrender. His generation saw it as their job to win the war. And so they rolled, rolled up their sleeves and went to work. And that's the way World War II veterans almost always speak of their service, a job that had to be done. 
the World War II generation in the Pacific, in Europe, and on the home front pulled together and gave of, of themselves to save a world, a world in which freedom of speech could be a reality, a world with tolerance for freedom of religion, a world that could work peacefully toward freedom from want, and a world with freedom from fear. Yes, my father and all the veterans of World War II 